Okay. <clears throat> Welcome everyone. This is SIG API June 4th. If everyone can add their names to the attendees. I have seeded uh, the agenda with um, some topics for today's discussion. If anyone else has topics to add, uh, please add it uh, to the agenda and we can get started. Okay, so the first thing um, Ed, I saw your comment about prioritizing this uh, this PR. Uh, I've added some thoughts on the the review. One of the things that stand out. So first thing, I think this is ready to go. We can have this merge for one point three release. Uh, but one thing I observed is that the the model enum uh, it is validated in in the admitter with a un uh, with, with a private variable so to speak so clients don't really have a real reliable way to actually enforce any kind of you know case by case checking or any kind of if and else conditions on these standard things. Um, I went looking for how Kubernetes recommends doing this and I found uh, from, from the um, API conventions document, I found that the recommendation is to have this kind of uh, alias to the string and have the enum as specific values. So one thing I was thinking is that as part of an issue under SIG API, we should track all of these one-off cases where we have not so, uh, you know, we have enums that are not following conventions to be eventually migrated so that clients have a way to you know, check the values of these uh, supported enums. I speak, I call it enums, but they are actually type cast, type casted thing, like type aliased strings. But in order to use a smaller term, I'm just calling it enums. Um, Ed, if you're trying to speak, uh, you are not audible to me. How about now? Yeah, much better. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I was saying is that um, we can open an issue on that and just work on it. I think it's not something really big. Um, yeah. I don't think it will even, I don't see why it will interfere with with anything previously. It's just, uh, look, it's more or less documentation and available for clients to use. That's it. Yes, yes, correct. It will just be an enhancement of how we are doing uh, enums. I, I don't think it will break anything. So yeah, it, that's why I have not blocked this PR on that. It It's something we can do as a follow-up. Uh, yes, by the way, this this kind of uh, what I what I was questioning is uh, in this case, the only thing that looks slightly dangerous is that for if you set if you the current currently it's like it it is asserting that uh, the specific value are there and if there is a different value it will not accept it and it will block it so it means that if if in a theory that if i have now a, a new manifest that accepts this new thing right this new value mm -hmm. then it will work but if some in some cases or in some for some reason 
it will go through that, uh, for example, the, the only scenario that I can think of is a downgrade, that someone is downgrading the CRD, then it will have a problem and it will break. Now, we don't downgrade at all, so that's why that's our uh, safeguard here that we don't support downgrade. But I I cannot. I don't. I mean, what what happens in uh, in other cases? Like, is it something that needs to be we need to be worried about or not? Like, this part of not downgrading. What Kubernetes are doing in this sense, for example? They are just not allowing something like that to ever exist or what? So if I understand correctly, this field is is a non-optional field, right? Yes, it's an, it's an optional field. I think. Oh, is it? Yes. Um, you, don't, if you, you don't have to specify. Oh, okay. It's it's sure. somewhere in the I don't know if it's here. It's like uh, in the type. J just look at the scheme. I think. Scheme. And yeah, and you see in the string itself. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's omit empty, but it's not plus optional. Like there is no annotation on plus optional. So yeah. I'm not sure how that will work, but no, yeah. that is not. I think yeah, that optional thing is not a must. I think it's a uh, plus optional. is is depends on who is generate who is the builder that that takes this and creates the 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 yeah the JSON schema itself. Generating the schema is an option and so on, but. What we are using, I think you don't have to have it. It's not a must. But other clients maybe are using that uh, annotation. It's it's not an annotation. It's like a comment, right? Yeah, I I think we need... So my understanding was that we need both to make sure that the API is sane. And if... So for example, if this is missing, then it's completely a disaster. Um, I think... Oh, no, I it's a I, I'm sorry. Right. No, no, I just want to say that if I remember we looked at it and uh, Cube Builder, which is I think is used to generate all of this stuff, doesn't have to have this plus option and it will the uh, omit empty is enough for him. Okay. So right. okay, perfect. Uh but this is not okay. correct in general. I mean uh, this is what I'm saying. It's like the reason I think that you have the plus optional is that maybe you are not doing it with omit uh, with cube builder. Maybe you're doing it with something else, and it was de done there. So maybe in the in the past, it was required in order to make it uh, like to make it like a protocol or something like that. So it will not depend on what you write in the in that omit empty thing. But but again, I'm not one hundred percent sure about it. Yeah, I, I think we can take that optional and omit empty discussion sometime else. I It might also be the case that initially the tools did not look at omit empty and needed plus optional. So we started with that and then the tools evolved and now we have a mixture of both. So it might be good to double check uh, what is the current best practice and if optional can be dropped, I would recommend just dropping it from all uh, entire code base, um, just so we have consistency across all API fields. But yeah, I don't want to diverge into that topic. Uh, the thoughts I have here is, why do we reject this particular situation where we find an unsupported uh, value instead of defaulting it to Vertile. So let's say in case of downgrade, right? You have an unsupported value IGB. If the mutator finds this out and defaults it to Vertile, um, then potentially the downgrade would work. The only issue there is that a, it's a semantic issue, which is 
a user is asking for a specific value and if it is not supported, we are changing that value on the fly. So that's a that's a issue with how spec semantics work uh, in, in the API contract, but at least it will help avoid uh, downgrade problems. So, so I mean, I mean that downgrade problem is solved only by making sure that it's all, always filled in the end, like it has a default. Mm. This is what you are saying. Because, Correct. Because, I'm sorry. because if it is empty, we are defaulting it to volatile, right? Uh, if it's, yeah, but I, that's not the part that I'm, I'm uh, like, I mean, actually, I'm not sure because in the end, we don't we don't intervene. It's like I think I'm not sure about this case specific. I think we don't intervene. It means that whatever the default is at Libvir, that's what is counts. Like if Libvir is changing the default, that's that's it. It's like yeah, they don't change it, right? But the whatever the uh, the under the hood uh, machinery there that works, like which is Libvir in this case, is whatever default is there, it, that will. That will be the case, and we are not taking part in, in this game. Uh, we are not deciding what is the default. We are not trying to intervene, nothing. This is the case, I think, today. So Thanks. in general, my the only concern that I have is that if someone adds this field, and then in general, that, I mean, this is what I'm asking in Kubernetes, how, what they are doing. They add, they, they add a new enum. And then they down if they downgrade, then that enum will still is it still in the database. So it yeah. will if we it will go validation, it will fail. Right? Maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. I think we should take this an action item to follow up. Yeah, but in any case, for this specific case, I agree with uh, I just wanted to raise this scenario because it sounds like interesting by itself. And I do agree that there is no uh, limitation here to add this because we really don't support downgrade and there is, and many other things will blow up if we do that. So that's that's not a reason to block this change. It's, and it's very yeah. simple. Um, one thing I would recommend, Ed, uh, I think this is a big enough issue to at least worth, like it's worth mentioning that issue here on the comment. Uh, reason being, as we find out uh, new changes during the review that follow this particular pattern, we can keep accumulating that and reference uh, the comment here um, everywhere. Or alternatively, uh, create an issue for it. Either way, I think this is something we should officially uh, track somewhere on GitHub. Okay, you mean the part with the uh, enums, right? The downgrade, yeah. The question you raised, yeah. right? What happens during... Okay. Yes, how... I mean, the question is how, in general, Kubernetes will handle this, if at all. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think we can let the hold... Um, release the hold and let this one go. At least good to go from my side. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, this one I've asked, um, Srija, I've asked for um, eyes on the review um, again. Um, yeah. We should have it, uh, we should have people chiming in soon. Um, I think we, we will still target uh, merging this in 1.3. Um, updates, do you want to give any more updates from the last time? Yeah, so I have at least a few bits of on that MR and uh, I checked uh, I mean, all the tests were also running fine. Okay. Yeah, so I think the tests are working and the uh, your comments are addressed. One thing I wanted to uh, recommend you. Yeah. So from this particular uh, PR, 
if you can create a branch, uh, a different branch, right? And add a commit that breaks API and just uh, raise it as a demo PR. Uh, I okay. think looking at a failure of like a sample failure of API breaking change will help uh, reviewers more. Um, and it will be a quick thing you can do um, to just add a breaking change. So that might help. Um, and once you have that, paste the link on the PR as well, original PR. And um, you know we all can swarm in and look at the logs and improve it if needed. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that takes us to the next item. Uh, and this is something that came up in the discussion with uh, folks on this enhancement. So there is a proposal to formalize the enhancement process. And one question that was raised is if we are formalizing the process, can we make uh, new API changes proposed, you know, uh, can we make it a requirement that any new API change will or should have its corresponding design document um, via the, the new enhancement process? And one thing that I think most people feel is that if we do make such a requirement, uh, the, the design document will kind of slow the process of bringing in new changes. That is, the review of those design document will become the bottleneck in the entire uh, development cycle of uh, of new features, right? So sorry, sorry. Uh, can you just can you just maybe can you just repeat what was the requirement that they suggested? If if the new if there is a new API, then should there we must be a have... design document? Correct. And in okay. what what I call a design document is basically an enhancement, right? So a Kubernetes like enhancement, but this proposal is calling it. VEP web instead of cap, which is virtualization enhancement proposal, right? Uh, so like we are following the Kubernetes cap model here, and that will be the living document that will be carried uh, throughout the life cycle of that feature. Yeah, so, so if we okay. were to make a requirement like that, I think there are some concerns that it will become the bottleneck. Uh, in the whole process. So I wanted to bring this up for discussion here. I, I obviously have some thoughts around it, but uh, you know what I wanted to get people engaged on what are some of the options we can do this uh, in a sane manner. Yeah. So my opinion is I'm actually very I I'm not I'm not uh, I don't I don't feel like I'm on on the that I don't know what what is like, I don't know how to express it it's not it's it's pretty clear to me what the answer here is like, yeah. first of all and I told them uh, twenty many times by the way it's like in my opinion we are in V one the project is considered stable. And needs to continue to be stable. So adding adding APIs and changing APIs should be a hard thing to do. That means that it is very great, great and fine that we it will have uh, it will take time 
to bring something in and having a design for each API chain that was uh, that is proposed makes sense. And and I think there was someone raised it that if they want to add a new field or change a value or stuff like that in a, in I mean you went to very detailed scenarios. So I think I think if you have a feature that uh, it had a, a proposal, right? Then you can just send a PR and update the proposal with what you want, and then if it is accepted there, then you can go and implement it. You don't have to open a new design proposal for uh, an existing feature. You can just enhance the existing feature proposal. And I think we did it. I mean, I I did it in several cases, and we have it ourselves like many times. Yeah. Um, that's so I it. Think, I I think that all of those con like I one hundred percent agree with all of those opinions, but. Here's what I feel that on top of those, uh, you know, acceptance that V1 project is going to be naturally slower and harder to iterate over time, right? Because we have built up all these things that we need to maintain. The problem I think I am facing is that whenever I see a design document come in, I do not have a, a clear understanding of the timelines of what is the requirement on the timeline, like how fast is this needed and things like that. Also, I think the, uh, the authors of the, the design document uh, could have unrealistic expectations on bringing the features in, right? I think we need to have some kind of conversation as to how to best prioritize uh, feature work that is going in. And if things don't go in, in a particular release, it's okay. Uh, if something is needed for that particular release, we should have a process to bubble it up. But at the same time, if it is doesn't go through, it's fine. There is always a next release coming. Um, we can we can get it then. I think having that expectation from both the author and the reviewer cleared up will help a long way uh, in in making this. Uh, acceptance that that changes will be harder and and longer in in a V1 project. Um, okay, so I I think this it's somehow connects to also to uh to the proposal that you sent, which for uh, to have that. Uh, what does it mean? What SIG API should stand? should own more or less or what is the its its uh, goal in this case and and i mean that, that maybe this is a the correct place to to emphasize this is that at the moment at least we are not seeing that this sig api needs to rule if like if if an API is is uh, is correct or incorrect, but we can we are supposed to at least we could try to advise. But I think the main goal will be to to make sure that all the information, all the reasoning to do the right thing, exists. Like yeah. uh, to build that uh, the ability to have it in the project. So so people that add add something new add some a new API or change something they can ha have like a, a guidance on what are the problems that they can expect uh, what are good thing what are good APIs what are bad APIs how they need to behave and one of the recommendation I think is supposed to be is to go and present your API and reason for it and tell why it is good and uh, show why it is okay to upgrade upgrade with it and so on and how the existing workloads will continue working all of this uh, all of this information 
this is what I will prefer to encourage the project to do. But but if someone is slowed down, uh, he's slowed down by his reviewers, like by the approvers of that, uh, the ones that review the design and approve it. They are not slowed down by the SIG API, right? So, so I'm not sure what, what are the expectations. The expectation is that every time you send a PR, you, it will take time until it gets merged. That's it. You cannot send a PR and ex expect it to get merged uh, half an hour later. It's not practical, especially yeah. if it's an API. So, yes. So I don't feel it's our problem. Um, sorry. Sorry for... Uh, deferring it to someone else, but I don't think it's it's our problem about someone else timelines. Like no, I, uh, I agree with that. I what I was trying to get at is that there is a gap somewhere in the process where stakeholders of Qbert do not have a good understanding of how the timelines would work. Right. So, for example, one of the things that I look at Kubernetes process, I see that there is an enhancement freeze in in the whole release cycle. Right. Like first few weeks is enhancement freeze, and the expectation is that at the end of the enhancement freeze, either you have got your design document approved, or it's still uh, pending. And if it is approved, then as a author, you know that this release, you would be able to drive your changes through to completion. Um, or at least you'll be able to make progress on, on, on the design document. So I wonder if something like that will help all stakeholders, especially SIG API, right? So if we have a uh, enhancement freeze or a deadline coming up, and if we have a list of design documents to go through, I think that will clearly prioritize uh, our time uh, in that. And when that is happening, we can let the API uh, PR reviews on the burn back burner because we know at that time, uh, it's just design doc review you know, slot, all the API changes are good to have and nothing critical. So I, I was tinkering with that idea, whether that would work or not. In my mind, it makes sense, but obviously, you know, I'm not covering all scenarios. So wanted to float that here as well. Yeah, I think it, I, I, it for, it makes sense to me. The problem is that I think even Kubernetes took took them years to get to that. Yeah. For example, I think the feature the feature uh, design phrase is something pretty new. It's not something that existed. I don't know a few years back. It's, it's uh, something new, and I think they learn it based on the mounted feature and some um, and the ability for them to actually manage to to add it to a feature like that was like they have like 10 times more feature i guess than us or even more per, yeah. per release so the so my concern here will be that maybe we are we are trying to do something that is a little bit uh, too much and it adds a lot of uh, restrictions like on one side they are they uh, the concern is not to put uh, too much bureaucratic in it because it it will uh, make things harder to get in and maybe this is one of the things that we can we are doing too much like having having a requirement to present it through a design either update an existing one or create a new one makes sense to me it's like you need to give reasoning and you need to have discussions and so that this part is very productive in my opinion and it will avoid having things in that not that others will see as problematic in the API. But adding to that uh, timelines and and this kind of uh, organization thing may may be much harder and it's actually hard to implement even. I don't don't know how they will how we, we can even enforce it. So 
Yeah. Um, maybe we can give recommendations like uh, uh, to give time and let's say we the design is uh, should not be it should be accepted at least two weeks before a feature freeze so there will be time something like that but but I don't know if you want to to get into that that's that's my point I mean I'm not sure that yeah. it's uh, you want to be there yeah I think that's a valid uh, concern as well um, I think it's the machinery on enforcing this is something that Kubert might not be ready for. Um, Kubernetes has a very well-defined release process where this is enforced, while Kubert release processes are not as formalized, I would say. So I yeah, I, I think that's a valid um, feedback and I I think it was only my attempt to bridge a gap where stakeholders do not have clear expectations on how to prioritize or how to deliver work items. I think there will be a more natural way of evolving that or evolving a solution to that gap rather than simply taking it from Kubernetes in this case. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I think that the, our immediate objective will be that to try to convince that uh, between oh. the extreme of having an API change and one single approver giving an approved LGTM to it in the same day or the day after. That's the one extreme. And the, the other extreme is uh, another other extreme. The, the norm should be that someone wants to add something, they need to open a, yeah. an update that is an existing design, open a design, yeah. a reason for this, explain why it is good, explain how it will work with upgrades and not ruin anything. Explain if if it's uh, gated with the feature gate. Explain how it will. Uh, what is the plan to, to go to move it to GA and so on and so on, and this should be the norm. And if there are exception, exception can be handled. But this is the norm, and this is what we want to the project to reach. And after that, if that is if that is agreed on, then we can go on, as you said, what based on the charter that you posted, I think that it's pretty clear that there is a, a, a concern about this uh, making it harder to have progress. So, so we need to, to be aware of that uh, resistance, I would say, or the, the concern that exists here and, and consider that when we when we try to give them to give give more uh, steps to follow. That's what I would say. Oh, I, I think okay. we're in a good uh, position at the moment. Yeah, right. it makes sense. What we agree on, at least. Uh, with that, I think this will be a natural next steps. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, not getting my. Indentations, correct. Yeah. So with regards to SIG API charter, uh, do we have any more action items here? Um, quickly opening up DPR. Yes, I, I think, think I need to... We need to escalate this to. I would. I would try to escalate this to Fabian, which has a, a say here. I think as one of the original authors of uh, So I will try to contact him offline and check if we can if we can push this on. I think the the currently the the concern is the, what we said before. What I said before. That they are they are uh, concerned that this will slow considerably the the 
the changes in the project, especially with APIs. And but but I think that the the concerns are valid, and if there is a way to, to express that this is not we are not going to block things, we are just going to recommend things. I think that should solve it. But, uh, I didn't got uh, feedback about uh, something practical that they are concerned about. Yeah, um, regarding That's that concern, concern regarding that concern of slowing things down. Is there anything we need to put in the charter to alleviate it? Uh, I think the discussion that we had today, some of the points raised in today's discussion could go into that, into the charter. We, we obviously need to summarize it in a refined language, but I believe today's discussion had a good set of pointers that can be you know consolidated upon yeah i just i just when i read the the what you wrote here i mean the, all the points i i really didn't identify anything that says that we will anyone will have the power to to reject something or uh, have a veto on on an api change i really don't i don't understand i think the concern comes with uh from from what can happen in the future, not something that is now. This is why I ask them if they have some some wording that they want to put here, so that, as you said, to alleviate this uh, uh, concern. But I, they, no one gave uh, something specific. Now I can, I, again, I can. The only thing I can try to do is to talk to Fabian, ask him if he thinks we can write something down that uh, will remove that uh, concern. Um, and see from them. At the moment, I don't know what I. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit concerned that if we'll add something to what is written here, we will we will do we will create more concern than remove concern. That's it. This is why I'm a bit. Um, I'm sure unsure what to add. Okay, makes sense. Like, All right. Do you, yeah, do you understand I mean, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But if I, you have an idea, please tell tell that. I mean, if you have an idea how to make it sound uh, less concerning to them, then yeah, I I actually so one thing potentially was that, <laughs> and you know, this is kind of a hack. So bear with me. What I'm the impression I get is that the use of terms sick chairs here is raising, uh, you know, some concerns. Give me one second. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if we can change this to SIG team or some like active contributors or something like that. Yeah, I I, I mean, I, I if you look at the thread, right, if I'm not mistaken, I actually asked if this will help, like if we remove them, I don't need to, I just, just let's remove SIG chairs, right? Will that help him? But he didn't say that it will help so that's why i'm not if he will say that if if someone for example vladik there which is the, at the moment the top uh, engineer in this project is if he will say that removing the sick chairs from this uh, charter will help to make, put it in then i'm 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 okay with it but he didn't say that so so I'm not sure. This is what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you is that I'm not sure what will help because I don't understand uh, the details of of uh, what will make them uh, okay with this uh, with this with this text here. And Makes this sense. is why I told you that I I will, I will try to talk with them. I don't. Know. 
Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. I I think that's a fair point. If we can, if we can get some kind of positive reinforcement that removing this will help or changing it partially would help. Uh, I think that will be fair. I would propose to not completely remove this. I think we should have some kind of team or active contributor list so that in the future, though the people in active contributor list can then be, you know, uh, laddered up into into different category. Um, so that would be at least my personal uh, opinion on it, but we can discuss this. Um, the other thing that I wanted to raise is that there was some concern brought up that people who are part of this particular SIG, they need to really understand the core mechanics of how deeply, uh, well, they need to understand deeply the plumbing of of entire um, you know life cycle or or the entire project. I think that's a valid point. However, that's not not the only requirement, right? I think that understanding the plumbing of the entire project is one aspect and that could be learned. However, the key requirement of people in, in the, the, the key skills needed for the SIG is that we need to really study the Kubernetes way of maintaining and, and running API changes and then selectively bring those best, best practices for KubeWorld um, with, with just API things in mind. The consequences of how those API changes affect the project is something that could be understood. And, and I don't think that perspective is uh, reflected on on the reviews. Yes, I also. By the way, the the it's as as you said, it's it's valid. Like that, someone will understand things here. But first of all, the 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 whole text of the chapter doesn't say anything about specific feature at all. I'm mean, not seeing anything saying that you need to be a an expert in a specific feature. And I think in this in this case, I don't see the I mean you what you said is correct and but I don't need I don't know if you cannot express it really except what you already have. If you find a way to express it differently, fine. But answering the answering it in in the thread that well, your answer sounds really good as well. No and I don't I, think really that I mean, I, I learned about API changes from this. The, we're talking here, right? We learned about what they want to change and learn what exists. And experts came and answered questions. So I don't think it's uh, I the person that has uh, has this is in this uh, sig needs to understand all the on the all the project or all its features. It just needs to understand the. The general concept and needs to be a learner from the experts needs to get the input and learn from them. Correct. Yes. So I didn't mean to. Well, we could obviously answer it on the thread, but the reason why I was bringing it up for discussion here is that is a perspective change that when you talk with with the you know relevant stakeholders. Uh, asynchronously, yeah, I think it's something good to continuously push forward, right? We cannot form this like group from a point like a perspective that okay, we are going to bring in virtualization experts, and then somehow um, they'll be the right folks to, 
you know, carry out uh, the work needed in the city. I think that would be a wrong way. Well, that would be not so ideal way of approaching form formation of this group, right? I think the ideal way would be, okay, let's look at what is missing. Let's look at well, how Kubernetes is, has been doing this successfully over the years and let's learn from it and bring it here and then express it with with the contributors in in a crisp clear communicative way I, I think that would be the right way of looking at it so the only reason why i'm bringing it here is it might help you to you know carry out those discussions um, whenever you have them yeah i think you i think if you look at fabian feedback i think he summarized it well and I think this is this charter is in sync with what he, he raised. So what he is thoughts on. So in this in this regard, I think we are we are good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then I think we can wrap this topic up. Uh the next one. Uh so I think we have 10 more minutes to look at. design documents and uh, pull request. One design document that came to, uh, that, that popped up while I was looking at things was this one, uh, <clears throat> adding ability for upgrading. I think the idea here is that whenever a virtual machine is created, the spec for it is saved in controller revision object. Controller revision is just uh, an object which can store any, any amount of random JSON data, right? It's a Kubernetes native API. So how it is used is the spec of the VMI is saved in this revision so that you have a reference um, that is preserved at that point of time. And then from that spec, VMI is created. So it will have the correct expected uh, spec from, from that version. Then if a user goes in and change it, changes the spec, it will create a new controller revision object. And then that one will be applied later on. Uh, the problem is that when you upgrade Kubeword versions and the APIs, the controller revision is still older and there is no good way of making the new API changes persist in that older object. So until that VMI is not recycled and a new controller revision object is used to create that VMI again, uh, you will have to support both the older controller revision as well as the the newer uh, API changes. I think this is a very interesting problem and this design document proposes one way to uh, solve it. I don't want to go into the details of this solution, but wanted to bring it up here. So if people have time, uh, you can look at it. I, I believe this will be in the realm of APIs because this is one of the consequences of upgrading the API. So uh, we might have to, you know, learn from, from this experience. Yes, uh, what I learned from this experience is that we should never use controller revisions, but no one listened to me. <laughs> they, uh, they, it's like it's like you choose a path to go forward, and then it's like you 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 have a problem, so you fix it using <laughs> some technology, and that that fix creates another problem that you fix that one, and so on and so on until you it it never ends, just continues on and on. Definitely, but I would I would suggest as a as a the first suggestion is never use control revisions unless it's your really must. I 
Well, I think we will have to block some time to discuss that opinion because from my perspective, controller revisions help you to solve a problem, which is saving the spec in an API so that you can upgrade or downgrade or roll out the API changes in a Yes, in exactly. a driven way. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, it's like a yes. It's exactly that, but it it is used here, right? For example, not for that. But yes, you're right. It's a, I think it's for deployments, right? If you can do a deployment, you can revert back to the previous case if it didn't succeed, stuff like that. But then Correct. you are right. But that's exactly what you define it well. And the question is. Does when you when you start using it, do you use it for that? Yes, that's the question. Correct. And and the other question is that the the deployment or the demon set or whatever pod pods uh, mechanism of deploying uses it assumes that the pod lifecycle is ephemeral, right? versus in a VMI, you could have a VMI running on forever and forever. That is the key assumption that the life cycle of your workload is ephemeral is broken here. And I think that is a significant assumption change for using the technologies involved in, in solving that problem, right? So yeah, that's why I believe we should schedule some time to break this problem space down and, and discuss it further. I would, I don't think I can go on to like to, to say it plainly that controller revisions are bad, we should not use it. I think we should use it with certain assumptions and if that assumption is not valid, then then we should look at something else to solve that problem. Okay. So a few more minutes, uh, quickly looking at this one. I wonder if we can just use Kubernetes and you know, like Kubernetes type for this. I think we already looked at this one last time. Why is this a API? Not sure if this is related to API changes.
Okay. Uh, I think we'll have to look at this one. Yeah, this is another quick one. I think this will be something we have to reject or propose alternative. Anyway, I think we are coming up uh, to the top of the R. Um, I've put the PRs here and I'm going to remove the ones that are completed. Uh, and with that, we'll sync up the next time. Okay, thank you. Thanks, folks. Have a good rest of the week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.